All right, we're live. Welcome to another episode of Turf Chat. This is episode 25, and we're going to continue on the theme of productivity, social media, and some of the um, tools that are available for golf course superintendents. So before we start, I think we'll uh, go around the room as we always do and start with Andrew on the left and just introduce yourself, say where you're from, and uh, anything else you want to say. Hi, uh, Andrew Hardy, superintendent at Pheasant Run Golf Club in Sharon, Ontario, Canada, and you can follow me on Twitter at PheasantTurf. Good morning, everyone. Bill Brown here. I guess uh, my first day or second day in my new role here with Turf Republic. Pretty pumped to be doing this. Uh, also founder of iTurf Apps with uh, Bob and Jason. So look forward to doing these more often. And uh, Jason, good luck today, man. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Uh, Bob Porter. I'm at Hiawatha Golf Course. I am at Hiawatha Turf on Twitter and also part of iTurf Apps. Uh, good morning. I'm Greg Schaefer. I'm the golf course superintendent at Elkona Country Club in uh, northern Indiana and uh, waiting for some turf to start growing out of some varying degrees of dormancy. Jason Chenault over in Mongolia at Mount Bog Golf Club at Jason Chenault on Twitter and uh, like Greg I'm waiting to see green grass sometime before June I hope. I'm Jason Mambuskirk. I'm the superintendent at Still Acres Country Club in Stowe, Massachusetts. Uh, we have broken dormancy uh, quite a bit and um, actually looking to get our first prey out soon. Uh, also a contributor to iTurf Apps with uh, Bob Porter and, and Bill Brown. I'm Larry Stoll from Pace Turf out in San Diego. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Matt Crowther, Mink Meadows Golf Club, Martha's Vineyard, Mass. And I'm just trying to stay a half step ahead. Fairway mower just fired up behind me. You probably can't hear me now. Um, Proxy Primo spray went out this morning and um, pack low on tees. Just trying to stay ahead. I'm Mike Huck, uh, Irrigation and Turf Services in Orange County, California, just an hour north of Larry. Okay, and I'm John Kaminsky, uh, Associate Professor at Penn State. You can follow me on Twitter. I tweet turf. I'm switching over. I'm getting rid of the uh, turf stuff on John Kaminsky. Um, if you want to see awesome pictures of Jason's wife, you can go to John Kaminsky. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you want to hear about turf, you can uh, follow me on I tweet turf. So. Jason, shout out to your beautiful wife. Um, all right, so I think we'll get started. I think that the idea with this is in the last uh, I had probably a few months, I started using Google Drive a little bit more. And for those of you not familiar with Google Drive, it, it basically is, um, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but basically it's a way where all your documents and files and um, information can be stored, similar to like a Dropbox, except it has some integration of functionality that I think makes it uh, pretty useful. And one of those has to do with creating Google Forms and using that in the workplace to increase productivity. And so some of the examples that we had briefly mentioned, I think, in a previous Hangout, and I don't know, Jason, if it was you or Bill, uh, but you use it to track your soil moisture, and basically your, your employee could be out on the golf course putting green, take the soil moisture readings, enter them in a little form very easily and quickly, and that information would automatically go back to an Excel database and then you know if you have graphs that are pulled off of that you could uh, you could create those as well and so it's a quick way to crowdsource entering of data and getting your information and as we were going through this I talked to Jason Van Buskirk and he said that he uses it quite a bit and I asked him if he would join us today and kind of share how he uses it and some of the experiences with Google Drive and Google Forms in particular. And so we're going to turn it over to Jason and he's got a, a brief presentation and we'll just try to make this casual, uh, ask questions. I'll be following along. If anybody has any questions that's listening live, you can ask that in Twitter using the hashtag TurfChat and we'll, uh, we'll try to get any of your questions answered um, that, that way. All right, Jason, you're up. Well, thanks, John. I appreciate the, uh, the introduction. If any of you are listening or are here in the Hangout that were at GIS this uh, past couple months, uh, I did do a short presentation on Google Drive 
uh, and its powers. And Google Drive for me uh, has been the changeover. Um, I currently don't really hold a lot of paper in my office because of Google Drive. Um, the the nice part about it is that it's accessible from really anywhere. Um, you could be in in Jamaica on vacation, log into the lobby computer and and grab all your files right there uh, with your Google username and and password. So um, that's not really the only reason because I don't certainly go on vacation very much. But um, <clears throat> I will show a a brief few slides on. On Google Forms in particular, uh, and then I'll go into um, two types of forms that I've built: the old style form and then the new style form. Um, Google has run run an update in the last couple of months on uh, building of the forms and and such. If you're familiar with Google Forms, then you're familiar with the update. If you're not, uh, then I'll I'll show you an overview of of what it is um, in the simplistic way on on how to sort of um, create the the, the the most basic of forms. They can get very in-depth um, and you can spend hours upon hours building your own form um, and then once you've built it, it's not necessarily the form but it's the actual uh, spreadsheet that, that you, uh, you get once you're done in the manipulation of that spreadsheet. So, um, so we'll, go, we'll go from there. Um, We'll go into the, the presentation here. And so your Google Form, um, when you log into your Google Drive, uh, this is straight from my presentation at GIS for simplistic uh, reasons. Um, but you can choose from seven different question types um, so that your user can answer, not exactly, but um, certainly how you intend. Um, you can make the response required. Um, so sometimes you might want them to have the option to glance over that question or you have to answer that specific question in order to move on in the, in the, uh, in the form fill out or maybe you're creating a survey. Um, duplicate the question uh, while you're building the form so that you can have the same question repeated but with uh, different wording, uh, the same style question repeated with different wording. Um, and you can even change the response the user sees once once answers are submitted. So after all of the answers have been submitted, you can actually edit the response that they see uh, and ask them to, um, you know, remind remind them to do this or remind them to do that or provide a, a, a hyperlink so that they can click on it and, and bring them elsewhere. Um, so that's it. Really. You're sort of tied, but but not really. It's it's versatility, and, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and it's it's really it's perfect for all types of data collection as well. Um, you know, you you can see here. You know, you have your text, your paragraph text, your multiple choice, your check boxes, your choose from a list, your scale, and, and your grid. Um, maybe it's a grading scale, and and you're doing an employee review, or uh, you're going out to survey a few greens that are are climbing out of our, our dormant winter here in the Northeast and, and you're going out to survey them and you know they, they all have their different grading scales and you're able to collect all that data from your phone, send it to a spreadsheet that you've shared with your owner or your greens committee um, and the my owner jokes with me and says you've created all these things and shared them with me so that we don't ever have to talk and and I, I jokingly say well um, yeah sort of um, but it, it it increases your efficiency and brings everything to the front page um, all the time so that all of your data is right there, uh, right in front of you uh, whenever you need it. And, and the, the most important part about it is the, the quickness of it and, and uh, how imperative that data is to you. It's not being scratched on a napkin or on a spare scorecard that you found in the back of your golf cart. It's being jotted down on your smartphone that you already have on you anyway, uh, and maybe you have a tablet because you don't have a smartphone. You can do it right there on your tablet as well. Um, so I've already sort of um, browsed through these these reasons, but it increases maintenance data recording for immediate reports. Um, so once you've compiled all of that data with your form, 
Um, it goes into your spreadsheet that you've already manipulated, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, but it it automatically generates those reports for you, so you don't have to you know uh, worry about oh yeah well I got to type up all these papers that I have strewn about my desk, and and uh, you know spend a couple hours getting that report. Uh, you can quickly easy grab that data point in a second. Um, it's it's pretty quick and easy to set up. It, it depends on the complexity of the form, obviously. But um, you know, if if it's the most simplistic form, then you know, and if you're you're savvy enough and, and willing enough to, to actually go through the process, it's pretty easy. Um, and like I said before, the form is the easy part. It's the spreadsheet that that makes sense. Um, it certainly has multiple uses. So once you've created that form, um, it it's tied to a, a, a URL and you can take that URL and copy and paste it and email it or text it to other members of your staff so that maybe they're out on the on the field and they're taking soil moisture readings or they're they're grading greens or they're uh, you know jotting down ideas for for the staff for the next day or the next week and they're filling out this form with their phone and and you don't have to do anything in terms of your your data that that you're collecting uh, you're the, the beauty of it is that you're delegating data collection um, with a form that you've created in the manner that you want and you value. So, um, moving on, this is just a screenshot of a labor hour tracking form that we built here um, at Stowe Acres. Um, this was the beginning of last year, um, even though it says version 1.3. Um, so, you have your name your job and then your length uh, and I'll show you an abbreviated version of the form that we we made changes to this year um, that tracks machine hours as well so <clears throat> this is a screenshot of the screen. hey, uh, hey Jason yeah. um, you're not sharing your live screen you're only seeing the back end of your talk so right now all we've seen is a screenshot of slide 18 we haven't seen any of the other stuff that you're uh, oh perfect you're that's all right. I think you described it, but just um, let's. Yeah, so you you can see this one right now. Yep, we can see uh, slide twenty. And all right. 19. Perfect. Um. All right. Let's. So let's. Yeah. So that's good. I didn't go. I didn't actually go very far at all. It was just a couple of bullet points. So so what you're seeing now is the labor hour tracking, and um, the name, the job, and the length, and we've made some changes. And uh, once again, it's easy to get that machine in there, um, but the power of the form, and once you get creative enough with it, is creating page breaks. And uh, I'll show that briefly, but when you create a page break, let's say, uh, you know, my employee Matt goes out to hand mow greens, and he selects that as his job, and on our new form, we don't have a length yet, it just hit continue, and once you hit hand mow greens, it spits you into mower one, mower two, mower three, mower four. And we've numbered our equipment so that we track labor hours, not for the employee, just for the employee, but also for the machine as well. Um, and and again, me as the superintendent, I, I do nothing um, in terms of the data collection, um, the entering really, the, the employee does it all. So. This is a, uh, a brief screenshot of what you will see. Um, let me see if I can uh, open that, uh, zoom in here. Um, so it's a brief screenshot of, of what, once that form is, is, uh, is done, you see the name, the job, and then the length. Uh, every form entry is time stamped. Um, you can choose to have that tracked or not, but it's nice to have that time stamp there uh, for verification purposes. Um, and then with some simple Excel equations or, or Google spreadsheet equations, formulas rather, um, you can quickly and easily start totaling every time employee X makes an entry his hours are calculated and give you a total year to date for for this employee and then you know if aeration is actually entered on the form it gives you a total entry for for how many hours have spent been been done for aeration um, and then and then 
certainly not last, but another f nice a nice thing about the Google spreadsheet is that you can run you can run a pivot table for for cleanliness. So if you are reporting on labor hours, um, you can have a nice, very clean um, report uh, that, with the click of a few buttons, um, you have your report available. Um, another screenshot that I'll get into depth with uh, in a second is, is the irrigation repair. Um, again, you see a variety of questions that are listed, and this URL can actually be sent out to um, members of your staff that you trust to report on irrigation repair. And, um, you know, they can pick the golf course, because we have two of them here, the whole number, the area on the golf course, what's wrong, parts required, the approximate cost for fix, and then status. So status is really... Um, great because you can look back at your spreadsheet and uh, I'll show you that in a second right here. Um, I've conditional formatted it so that if the text if the text reads complete then it turns green and if the text reads needs repair it turns red. So it becomes a game for the staff. They don't obviously want needs repair to, to show up on the sheet very much. So uh, another, another neat thing that I'm going to go into is the the building of it. So um, just for verification, you can see this screen now. The uh, my drive, my Google Drive. Um, this is the 2012 spreadsheet format, uh, and what you see is the actual hard um, data. And, and what's going on here. If I go into edit form, um, this is the old style form that, that uh, you would have seen prior January or prior February rather. <clears throat> so you have your title and then um, your question type. So this question type happens to be a list. And hey Jason, we're not we're not seeing that. We're only seeing your 2012 irrigation repair. We're not seeing the uh, form. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there you go. So you have you have your question type. <clears throat> you have uh, this one happens to be choose from a list. So you just enter north or south, um, and then I've made this this question required so so you check the box off and then you hit done and then the next one is also a list so holes 1 through 18 and it's done um, area of the golf course um, what's wrong parts required uh, are both paragraph text so that it gives the uh, me as the superintendent or or other users um, obviously what's wrong is required because we need to know what's wrong with with what's going on in the field, but parts required might not be totally known yet, so we leave that unchecked so we don't make this a required question. Uh, the approximate cost for fix, again, you know, we leave that unrequired because it might not be known just at this time. And then the status, uh, unfortunately, can't be changed from another form entry, but if we go back into the spreadsheet, uh, it's a, I mean, for what it's worth, it's kind of it's a little cumbersome in the world of, of technology, but um, you make it such that it makes sense for you. So you enter all of your information on the form, and then you just have to come back here to your status. So, you know, if this happens to be repaired, you know, we turn this over, and we just make this complete, and it automatically turns green on us, and now we're, we're no longer in the green there, or the red there. So, um so that's irrigation, and if we were to go to, uh, I'll go into the labor, the, the labor chart, the new form that, that we built this year. Um, so currently, right now, I think you just see a, a spreadsheet of of our machines in our hours, uh, in our running total, and it gets a little crazy, but. If I were to show you the form, it's kind of neat. Um, let me bring that, that edit form up for a second. <clears throat> so 
So every time someone submits a uh, uh, a form, it creates another record in the in the Excel spread. I mean the uh, Google Docs spreadsheet. Is that right? Correct. So every time, so we have this this form right here that you see in front of you um, is is the edit version, and uh, I brought this up to mainly show you the um, the page breaks. So you, what you do is you insert a page break so that if it's entered on the form that they've done greens, then it spits them to another section of the form that gives them a list of greens equipment that could be used to mow. If they say they did tees and approaches, then it spits them to another version of the form, another section of the form that gives them a list of equipment that could have been used to mow tees and approaches with, uh, so on and so forth. So each job has been specified and given its own list of equipment to track hours for uh, equipment that we care to tra track hours for. So, hey, can you go to the live? Can you go to the live form instead of the back end of that? Because right now we see the um, you know all those pages, but I think it would help to like. Of course, yeah. Show the, show the live version, and then you'll be able to see. Like, I assume there's a bunch of if then statements. So, like, if they answer this, then go to page six. If they answer that, go to page four, or something like that. Um. Yeah. We'll. Uh, let me bring that up from the screen share. Also, there was a question from uh, Chris Trigerball asked, and I think Greg, you replied to him. How do you do it? Uh, how do you have your employees, um, Jason, fill out these forms? Do you have like some setup in the shop, or are they doing it on handheld device, or what? Yeah, I well, both. So I'm I'm fortunate enough that a lot of my a lot of my staff members have have their own personal smartphones. Um, that they've said, yeah, sure, you know, I'd rather use my phone than, than use the computer. But we have a shop computer that sits uh, at the base of the stairs, and uh, on there we have our digital job board, um, which is, uh, I think you could, can you see that? Can you see the job board there? Yeah. Um, we, have, we have our digital job board, and then we have this form. So they sit, they sit side by side from each other, and... Um, when they come in, either in the middle of the day or at the end of the day, they simply just go over to the computer. They select their name from the drop down. Uh, they select their job that they did. So uh, I thought about having multiple entries because naturally most employees are going to do multiple jobs throughout the day. But for uh, spreadsheet compatibility purposes and, and setting it up, it just made more sense to have the employee enter one one job was one entry and then their second job was a second entry third job so on and so forth so uh, for simplistic um, reasons here we'll just go with uh, Matt and he did course cleanup for the day or for now and then you hit continue and because he selected course cleanup it brings him to the cleanup section of the page of the form and it gives him a list of equipment that he can choose from to actually that we we want to track um, so the New Holland is used for multiple reasons, but in this case it was used to clean up. And then we'll hit continue. And now it, now it gives them a, a list of uh, hours in length uh, on the quarter, so it can be somewhat accurate or as accurate as possible. Um, and, you know, he can, hit, he can hit four and then he hits submit, and I can very easily go back and delete that entry. So you hit submit. And it says thanks, and you can, like I was saying, edit the response that the user sees. So it says, please click submit another response for another response to continue. Thanks, um, and that wording doesn't make sense at all, and I'm just realizing it now. But that's fine. Um, here, you could, if you're doing a, a survey or or really anything, you can click on that if you wanted them to look at another link. Um, refer them to a blog site or so on, you know, it's, it's powers are endless. Um, so can, can you show how you hook that up to the uh, spreadsheet or the, you know, your form to the spreadsheet itself? The form, when you create a form, it automatically creates a spreadsheet for you. So if I were to, you know, let's just say I was to going to go back into my, my Google drive, uh, right here. And I were to, I were to hit create and I hit form. We're brand new. We're we're from scratch here. And um, we can title it whatever we want. We can pick our 
our background and our whatever you know whatever we want it to look like for this you know we'll, we'll say that one now this is a new version of of the form and this is why it looks a little different um, you know you can say uh, title it whatever you want um, and then our we can have a list and second you know whatever you want it to be uh, and it's required and it's done so once you've completed that you choose the response destination so wherever you want the response destination to be if you want it to be in, in an of us you want it to be a spreadsheet from an on an existing document you can choose to do that or um, I just like the form to have its own spreadsheet and its own document so I just always have it to be a new spreadsheet um, and we hit create once it's sit once it sets up the spreadsheet, you can view responses. So we're reviewing the responses, and if we were to go back into here and view live form, did you enjoy? Yes, submit. It automatically will come through um, and hits, automatically comes through and says yes. So once you've done that and you've created your form, when you're creating the form, you want it to really make sense in your head of what you want the spreadsheet to look like, but it doesn't have to exactly match up because once you're here, you can manipulate it and you can color code it and you can center it, <clears throat> whatever that you know, whatever you choose to do. So um, that's the that's the simple um, the simple version, I guess you could say. Um, I've spent hours upon hours upon hours researching this and making it worthy for our operation here at Stowe Acres. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have have winter as our somewhat of a downtime, but you know I do a lot of it at night when I when I go home too and make make sense of it there as well. And I really I have a form built for for just about you know every uh, every section of our of our operation. You know, I have a labor hour tracking, irrigation repair, equipment repair, soil moisture, um, spray uh, spray records, um, product inventory. I, I mean, I it, the list just could go on and on and on and on. And some of them are very simple and some of them are very, very, very complex and very in-depth. Uh, not from a form standpoint, because the form you want to be as simplistic as possible. Uh, from the spreadsheet, side you want it to be as little little work from you as the superintendent as possible so that you can just very quickly and easily look at your spreadsheet and say oh yeah that's where we stand so hey Jason do you, is there sorry Larry go ahead no you go ahead is there um, a way that there must be I don't know with within Google I know if you do it in Excel you can do it but is there a way that you can have all that data automatically be put into a more visual appealing uh, graphic, like a like a pie chart or a graphic, uh, anything like that, so that you can track things without looking at the data? So basically, you have the form, you spit the simplified information into the data table. The data table does some calculations based on whatever you tell it. Is there then a way to pull that out into like a, a figure or chart or something that makes uh, a little bit cleaner look? Uh, well, yes, uh, to, to answer your question exactly, I mean, yes, there is. It's, you can keep the, when you go back into the creation of it and um, you're making your form, you can have, you can have it stay, you can have the responses stay within the form itself and it will automatically create a chart for you. It automatically creates a graph for you. It'll track responses um, in, a, in a graphic. I choose not to do it only because it doesn't exactly give, give you, it's non, it's non customizable. You can't, you can't customize it and say, oh yeah, I want this chart to look like that. I want it to be a pie chart, or I want it to be a bar graph, or I want it to be a line graph. You can't choose that type of thing. Um, if you choose to keep the responses in the form, the form just does it for you. Um, 
once you're actually in this spreadsheet, you can then start creating pivot tables and charts. And, um, you know, I, we certainly don't have time for it in this Hangout, but you can start. Um, yeah, John, I think I think maybe that would be that's probably the whole the whole graphing and charting and uh, and handling data is probably a good separate kind of a hangout. Yeah, us. I think I think that's a good idea. I just was curious if that was possible because in Excel, one of the benefits is you collect all this data and then you spit it out into a format that is you know easily transferable into a form or a document you might give to your supervisors. The last thing they want to see is a spreadsheet of numbers. Um, so that's why I was curious if it was possible, and I haven't, you know, gone into the depth of Google Forms well, to that degree yet. So I, I, have, I have another question, just just for a second, on the just on the practical side of it. Uh, how how do you restrict access to the forms and to the spreadsheet so that you, can you keep them separate so that uh, people have uh, edit, add, delete sort of uh, restrictions so somebody couldn't accidentally just nuke out your whole spreadsheet once it's uh, all set up. Yeah, so um, the form itself is just a URL, and and um, you can take that URL and, and give it to whoever, and if they only have the form URL, there's absolutely no way, shape, or form that they can get into editing the form. All they can do is utilize the form as a form. Um, in order to see the spreadsheet, um, you click Share, and uh, I believe you have a Sharing Settings screen that's up now. Um, yeah, um, so from here, I can, where it says change, I can make this public on the web, anyone with the link, or private only to me. Uh, most of what I have for the operation is private, private only to me, and then from there, I can enter the email addresses of whoever I want to share it with. Um, so... Uh -huh. How about the form also? Can, can you restrict the, uh, if it's just a URL, can you restrict entry on the form, or is it, uh, do you depend on your crew not to send that to their buddies? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, they're not, I mean, the, the form itself is the form itself. It's, I mean, yes, I, I understand where you're going with the question, but if you have a rogue, if you have a rogue response, I mean, you're going to, you're pretty much going to catch it. It's not, you know, and if you do have a rogue response, it's usually data that's not really relevant anyway. So you're just going to delete the delete the entry. Um, it, it's obviously a question for concern, but um, you can't. The URL is the URL, and if if they decide to text that to their buddies and they want to goof around, I, I mean, chances are they're not doing that. I've never experienced it in the two years I've been doing this, but. Who's to say it can't happen? Um, you can't really limit access once they have the URL. What what you can do is you can go up. You can go up to um, well. You can go up to named and protected ranges, and you can lock certain cells, um, certain rows, certain certain columns, certain whatever, um, so that only certain users have access to editing certain portions of the spreadsheet. Uh, or you can choose to, this is just the spreadsheet now, this is the, the file called Hangout Responses. Um, once you're here, you know, you could very easily type in um, An email address that that you're choosing to share with, and and from here, it it can be can edit or can view. Uh, and what I do most of the time with with uh, folks that I don't want to do anything to the spreadsheet, I just want them granted permission to view the the data. Uh, I just hit view, and then they can't they can make a copy of it and and do whatever they want with a copy of it, but they they can't do anything to my exact document. So. So there's no like user validation for who's putting the submission. It doesn't check, can't check like their Google uh, no. ID to make sure it's the, or you can have it post their ID, or does it, is there a way to do that? I, I, I don't know of any at this time. Um, if you go into, 
if we go back here and we go to the live form, this URL right here is the live URL. So if I were to take this URL and I were to copy it, I could then text it or email it or send it to whoever I wanted. I could post it to Twitter. And when, folk, when you see Google Forms that are posted to Twitter for survey purposes, this is what it is. It's just a URL of a Google Form. So, um, yeah, you can't, you can, if you ask their name and their email address, then yeah, you, uh, and you make that, you make those questions required. They, you know, I, I got into, uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you, and that's a valid question. I embedded a Google form that I made for an employee application on my blog site. And, uh, you know, being, being friends with multiple people in the area, um, Someone was obviously goofing around and entered some rogue answers into that employee application, and I got it in in my spreadsheet and um, and noticed that you know it was goofy data and and uh, you know it is what it is. But uh, I guess you're up against that when when you choose to be. So, Larry, I I think there's there's a lot coming down the road for Google. Um, they're going to allow you to style these sheets up very soon, so you'll be able to create a like a CSS a uh, custom CSS file for these to put your logos and uh, as more advanced as these get I certainly see them creating some kind of lock feature or, or validation feature uh, if you choose to because people just like the uh, iOS development community and the Android development community this this is a tool that was put in developers hands and they're finding out what the capabilities are of it um, from, a, from a data export position all, all it is is a CSV file so you can choose to export it into Excel and then create whatever type of graph you want I would suppose then I'll, I'll finish with this if you wanted to you could select the entire uh, once you create the form and you've got no entries you could technically highlight the entire blank form um, and create yourself uh, a, a chart or what, however you want the data kicked out more visually appealing and then it would automatically generate that for you as entries are put in. Um, hey, hey Greg, I don't mean to interrupt you Bill, but that was a good transition. Greg had uh, screen shared uh, not only how his employees enter the data, I saw that on Twitter, um, but you had mentioned that you've got some graphs that you create. Um, any uh, way you could share that? Yeah, we just I just do a. Uh, <clears throat> I was just messing around with it a couple of days ago on uh, some of our April labor stuff. Um, once I put it, once it gets put into a pivot table, I created a graph out of that. I'll see if I can get it going here. Uh, can you see it? What's that? What's a pivot table? Yeah. Can you see it? You guys can see the labor yeah. stuff. Yeah, we see it. Okay. There it is. So this is basically just for the month of April so far, um, employees and tasks. It's very similar to what Jason, uh, what Jason's put together, and it extends out for all of our all of our different categories. And then it's associated with the labor cost at the at the end of it, what it costs for each task. And then what I did was I just took that and put it into a a pivot table for each individual, uh, what it cost to do each task, how long it took for each person. And then I uh, just put it into a, an April report, so it only shows the <coughs> excuse me. It only shows the tasks that have been performed month to date or year to date or whatever. It doesn't take every single task and put it in there. It only does the ones that have time and expense with it. So, for example, on this graph, it's kind of flip flop with the, the way the bars are, but we've got labor hours on the left side for verifying to this point. And then, uh, actually, in the red is labor hours, and then the blue here would be the the cost of what it's cost us to do that, which is associated with the value over here. I don't know if that's what you were talking about, John, or not, but that's how we put it together. And you can you can actually go through um, and mess around and uh, mess around with the chart, and you can put it into uh, different uh, different forms or different different styles if you want. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. So okay. obviously, once you create that pivot table, then you can have access to do any charts, graphs, figures that you want. Yeah, it's certainly not as um, 
neat and tidy and as advanced as what uh, Excel is, but it gets the point across. I mean, it's, I think it's pretty straightforward to see where our where our expenses are. You know, I'm absolutely thrilled that we're spending so much on bunkers this early in the season. To be honest with you, it was such a waste. But anyway, you get the idea. But that that's the point. You know, that's what we're trying to show is where's this money going, and does it make sense to to put that much money into uh, into bunkers for the first week of April? Yeah, I think that the interesting part about this is, one, that you can use your employees to crowdsource this information. So as Jason mentioned, getting it set up can be pretty um, cumbersome if you really go to the depths of creating pages and having all this information uh, gathered behind the scenes. But if you get the form easy enough for your employee and they feel comfortable with you know, selecting their name, entering their job and whatever it is that you're tracking, and then they can automatically go to one of those charts that you showed, uh, Greg, then I think that that's awesome. I mean, that, that basically takes it from the employee entering the information to you having a visual record of what's been spent or hours used. Um, I like the idea of tracking soil moisture on your putting green, so if you've got your TDR out there and you're probing it and you put those numbers in for greens 1, 2, 3 through 18, and then it goes into a chart that shows you your you know percent moistures, that's fantastic. I mean, and that's information that your employees are gathering that you're not gathering. I think that this is the way that superintendents need to start going is, is not relying on themselves to do all that tracking, but use your staff to do it. Now, Larry brings up a good point in terms of, well, if you had somebody enter wrong information or, you know, you know, you know, they give the link out and then it goes to somebody else. Yeah, of course you could have problems, but I mean, you're talking about the superintendent's yeah, small crew. I mean, I can't imagine that that would go to a point where, you know, all of a sudden anybody's really going to you know, bomb your data um, <laughs> with with false information. Um, I guess uh, it could happen, but and there's accidents. I don't know that's some sort of thing. I, I'm just looking at the uh, thing of the advantage. The advantage is to be out in the field and be able to enter it for use in uh, Google because you're in the cloud. But uh, some of the stuff will work just fine in uh, Excel too, where you could have a little bit more. Um, you know, refinement on access by usernames and logins on the computer itself, so that people could own, only people who uh, were. Uh, I'm just saying that dirty stuff, but just throwing it out there. Yeah, no, and I think if you're, gonna, if, if you're talking about a business aspect of it too, I mean, then you really get into the security. But in this case, where you're just tracking, uh, you know, some basic information, I think that it, it can be useful. And I, my guess is that Google's got to go through some kind of system as they get this more fine-tuned where they're going to be able to have you know password protected areas and, and that kind of stuff I would I would assume but <clears throat> well, they already, you already what it's worth there are some other online sources um, there's some other websites that build forms that you can also then tie into Google Forms um, Jot form is one of them J-O-T F-O-R-M you can go to there and for a free for signing up for free you get to make so many forms but there's one option on there you can do validation by either alphanumeric or by email or by you know whatever you set it for and then you can actually tie job form to Google Forms or to the Google Docs so the entries aren't actually made in a Google form they're made in a job form but then the data is sent to your Google Drive and it's all there and it's protected <laughs> and it's protected by because you validated that form um, so that's one more advanced service that's allowed. And like I said, JotForms is free initially, and then you can sign up to pay how many forms you make or how many users you have. Yeah, so that's good. I mean, I think that as these technologies come out, you see that uh, services are developed, and then because of the open API, they basically somebody else develops a better way to do it, but that talks to another service. And so you end up getting all these things that can work together, whether it be Google Forms or Dropbox or Jot form or any of these things, and I never heard of jot form, but um, it's worth worth looking into. So that, Anybody uh, else? Go ahead. Just another question for Jason. Did the uh, when they upgraded the system, did that cause any problems with your old forms? No, because when you when you create a form, you can actually uh, create it or choose to keep it in classic or upgrade it to um, the new style. So it didn't really create much of a problem at all. Okay. Jay, I may be the the most beginner in this, but in case somebody else uh, has the same questions, what's a pivot form? Uh, um, 
a pivot as table as a pivot yeah. table is pretty common to um, to Excel, um, but if you're for for the sake of um, an explanation that might not make a whole lot of sense, I'll just uh, I'll share I'll share this again, um, and I'll pull up irrigation repair, and you go into data, uh, and then you go down to pivot table report, and uh, and once you're in over here, um, you can choose for the rows to be, um, you know, the course. Um, you can choose for the the column to be uh, area, and then the values to be um, approximate cost per fix. Let's just say. So that's really from from an overall viewpoint. You want to know how much did it cost to do fairways on the north course? Well, it was twenty six hundred and seventy dollars. Greens was almost thirty five hundred dollars. So on and so forth. Um, and you have a pretty, with the with the click of a few buttons, you were able to generate that that report from this spreadsheet that was compiled from the form that your employees entered all the data on. Does it make sense? Right. Make sense? Yeah, a little bit. I'm I'm probably the most novice at it. I was going to go back to a question that I think John asked a little bit earlier and he mentioned if thens. When your guy clicked on course cleanup, it then went to the way he, uh, uh, the tools that he used. But when you set up your form, how did he go from there to the next place? I, and sorry if I missed all that, I just... Well, I'm I didn't really... To set up my forms right now. I'm trying to kind of follow what you guys are doing and, and set up for the first time myself and some of this is... Totally. I didn't, I didn't really go into too much depth, and uh, I'm not sure we have a whole lot of time for that um, yeah. today specifically because it's adding page breaks and it's getting into a real complex form setup style um, that is uh, is worth a, probably a whole another half hour in itself. Yeah, Jason. Jason, that, what I could say with it to try and simplify it a little is, if you ask a question and you give, uh, you know, ten responses, um, you know, greens, tees, fairways, whatever it is, you can tell depending on the response. You can say if they click this, then take them to page three, and then on page three you set up the responses that are directly related to that answer. And then for say greens, it might take them to page three, but T's, it might take them to page four, and in the form, when you put out your answers, you basically tell it, if they respond to this, go to a different page, and then you create that page based on that response. So it's it's a, it's a it's not so difficult to do, it's just a matter of you have to think in advance of what, you know, how you want your flow to work through, uh, through all the pages and stuff. Uh, so it. basically, it, it narrows down, so if they answer fairways, it's not going to take them to form uh, page eight, which talks about T's. It takes them directly to the one specific for that that you told it to, to go to. Right. So anyway, I, I think this was a good introduction. It's obviously, you know, a fairly complicated issue. The the levels of understanding, not only of Excel, but um, Google documents and, and even security issues is, it vary so much among the group. Um, but what I like about this is that people can go back and at least get an idea of what some of the uses are. Um, to be honest, I'd love to see somebody go and create all of these forms and then basically sell them for like two bucks a piece or three bucks a piece uh, so that people could just download them and then create their own Excel files because I don't want to have to go through and build all these complicated tables um, but you know it, it, it seems like somebody could come up with a good business model to develop these forms and then they're just generic forms you buy them for two bucks or three bucks or whatever you can sell them for um, through PayPal or something and then you can download it and create your own Excel spreadsheet and then if you want customization then you could pay a you know a premium fee or something I see it as a a pretty good way to make a little bit of money if somebody has the patience in setting these up um, because I would rather pay two bucks or three bucks for a form that was created for me than try to go through and learn the development of of all these forms so hell um, yes I'm sure somebody would be. Uh, I'm sure somebody. Oh, I, I'm sure that. I'm sure that there's uh, three guys sitting on the screen right there. I can see the smile on Bob's face already. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, it, I don't 
think it's a unique idea. I think it's just a matter of getting somebody to come down and do it. If if iTurf Apps is going to do it, that's awesome. I mean, I think that's a valuable service that if if you guys are planning on doing it, um, that people could take advantage of, which is great. I mean, I think that the idea to to make other people's lives easier. Um, you know, you're Bill now. You're with Turf Republic, so obviously you're looking more on the entrepreneurial side of things and less on the being a golf course superintendent. But with your background, you could develop these things that people could take advantage of. So I, I see it. I see it as being a win-win for everybody if if uh, if you do it. Yeah, John, you kind of lobbed that softball up to me, and Bob and Jason and I are texting. But uh, I can hear us, it. It's like it's, it's yeah. <laughs> the the three of us have been working uh, since GIS and. Uh, we are probably uh, a month away from releasing our first app, which is pretty exciting, which is going to feature um, uh, Google Forms like this. Uh, we're, we're initially starting with an app that will probably most likely utilize Google Forms as its, uh, as its input source and export source, but uh, we are working feverishly and Thanks to uh, thank thankful there's still snow in Minnesota because Bob's been working his tail off. Um, that uh, it, it, the the app will have a kind of standalone uh, input and export feature to it, which is nice. So bear with us; we're very close. Our, our goal is to make sure it's easy to use and useful, and not doesn't make our lives more cumbersome. So what bear um, with us. are you custom building this, or is this something that you guys are using a service for? Uh, both, kind of both. Uh, the, the services are out there. Um, some of them, when you build from a service, you're stuck with what they, what you build. And then there's some other services. Um, Bob did a great job researching this for us. That once you build it, you can export it to Xcode. And then um, if you know a little bit of Xcode, you can manipulate from there and kind of create your own. Very similar to WordPress, where if you can import, you import a plugin, and then if you understand some CSS and HTML5, you can change the the uh, plugin around. So similar thing. So the three of us are very excited. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything to add to it, but uh, we we've got a beta version out that we're working on right now. The three of us have it on our iPhones and our iPads. Uh, we're working on Android as well. But uh, Bob Bob's been doing a ton of work. Uh, Jason has been as well. Um, but uh, it, it's it's exciting to see us moving in this direction. Can you say uh, what the service is, the initial uh, software that you're using? I don't know if you want to give that away. I assume it's like a public thing, but I don't know if you want to mention it. It's a public thing, but I don't, I don't want to mention it right now, <laughs> if that's, yeah, that's okay. Fine. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> no, that's fine. I just I, In looking at all the development of this app stuff, I know we built one through Penn State, and now I'm working on one that's going to be released um, at the end of the month, probably in the next two or three weeks, looking at... Um, uh, Pest, basically pest management and tracking of pests and stuff. And so um, I did a lot of research trying to figure out what the different apps are available, and um, there's a lot of them, and they all offer different kind of functionality and come at different price tags. And so um, I was just curious. You can tell yeah. me off You can tell me off air. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, it, I mean, it's very similar to the blogging community. You've got, like, Blogger, which is the easiest, most basic, and there's apps like, conduit app that's out there for that just very simple plug and play drag and drop and then you've got more dynamic ones where you've got to understand how some things work a little bit so I would you know kind of moving up towards WordPress but uh, right. it, we're, we're pretty pumped we'll be out soon good what's it gonna be called we don't know yet okay. we might have a naming contest <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, anybody else have anything uh, about the Google Forms or any experiences or questions? Uh, I think we'll wrap it up, and we're almost at an hour here, but it, at last, uh, if anybody has anything else. I didn't see any more questions in the uh, <clears throat> in the conversation or not, but uh, I do see, actually, Chris Tritable asked about um, can the forms be translated to Spanish? Anybody know if there's, like, Google Translator works with any of this? Mm. That I don't know. That's a good question. That's a great question, especially for our industry. So, Chris, uh, we'll have to do some research and try and figure that one out. Can, can the forms be uh, modified once you've created them? I mean, is that a hassle, or do you have to recreate something if you get all done and go, man, I really wish I'd had this and this also in the middle of that form somewhere? Uh, you, no, you, really can, 
<clears throat> you can certainly make edits um, very quickly and easily. Uh, you just need to pay attention to what it does to your spreadsheet and how it makes every, all of your data look. So um, if you're prepared to do that, as provided there are not a lot of changes, then yeah, sure. Okay, well, um, I think it was a good discussion. Jason, thanks a lot for sharing yeah. that information and everybody else for putting their input. Greg, for sharing some of your stuff. I think that these discussions are exactly what I want, which is uh, scratch the surface, give a little bit of information, get people interested in things. Um, it's not meant to be like we're going to teach you how to build forms. You know, that's like an eight-hour workshop at, at GIS or another show. So. Um, I think this did exactly what it was supposed to do, which is get people interested in what's the possibility. So why don't we do this? Why don't we go left to right um, and just uh, final thoughts, anything you got coming up you want to promote um, or uh, just say bye. So I'll start with you, Andrew. Well, I, I was fortunate enough after the last conversation to uh, grab Jason for a quick Google Plus chat. and. With the two forms that I've created, I've probably eliminated about 400 pages of paper that are going to be uh, that we attract. Like a, a we have by law, we're required to have an equipment sign-out sheet, and um, we're also required to track fuel because we get a, a a federal tax grant on it. So that alone, the the equipment sign-out was 300 pages a year. Because you literally, the person would sign out each number of equipment. So we've numbered all our equipment from one to 119, and uh, now on one form that takes three minutes to fill out, I have killed about four birds with one stone, with no paper, and saved ten trees. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys know me. I'm a bit of a environmental freak, so. It uh, it all fell in line with what with what I'm looking to do. So um, it's been amazing. Good, but uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you dare <laughs> at Pheasant Turf. Um, and uh, we are just getting prepared. We uh, decided today that we will be opening on Wednesday. Oh, sweet! <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bill. All right, great talk. Um, I guess what I'll leave you with is we've got these great technology tools out there, and, and there is a ton of data. And uh, Google Forms not only allows you to collect this data, but then use it. Greg is using it, or, you know, I used it at Hartfeld for moisture. I would pull weather data, and I would graph greens moisture against dew points, against uh, day lengths, I mean everything. So really it, it's limitless as to what you can begin tracking now and the best part is you don't have to do a whole lot of work which is great. So uh, great to see all you guys again. Uh, looking forward to moving ahead. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Green Super or at Turf Republic. Um, we'll talk to everybody soon. Uh, I don't really have a lot to add other than what we uh, have already talked about but uh, we are probably not even a, maybe a week or two from opening here. We don't have any snow on the ground right now, but we have rain right now, and there's actually a storm coming through. We could possibly get up to eight inches of snow here by Thursday. So um, we are hanging in there. It's really wet, uh, but we're trying to get stuff cleaned up as best we can. So, But I'm really excited about the app as well. Uh, I've spent a lot of weekends uh, plugging away in the computer with that thing, and uh, hoping to uh, get more testing on it with us and uh, get it out to people as soon as we can. Yeah, I'll kind of second what uh, Andrew said. I started playing around with this stuff probably about five or six months ago, and it's kind of morphed into its own little deal. Um, we use it to, as I showed earlier, kind of track our, uh, our labor expenses, where we're spending our money, how much time it takes to do things to see where we can become more efficient. But uh, I've also set up a separate form for tracking uh, equipment maintenance, uh, time spent on repairs, and cost of repairs for all of our equipment to help. Uh, justify our capital expenses uh, to make it a little easier to present to the board on why we need to replace certain pieces of equipment. So um, I think it's a tremendous tool. I think this is a good uh, good hangout for sure. Um, as far as uh, the turf side, uh, we we've been open about a week and uh, really looking for some warmer temperatures now. We've got to we've got to get going here. But Bob, you keep the snow up there. I don't want it. <laughs>
Yeah, uh, just glad to um, to be able to participate. Um, we, you know, being at the first golf course in the country, there's there's not really any baseline. There's no data, so I see this these forms as being pretty helpful because they they're all engineers and et cetera here, so they love spreadsheets and forms. So glad to. Glad to uh, at least get a piece. I'm definitely one of the guys who will pay two or three bucks for the. Uh, <laughs> the price just might, might have went up. <laughs> yeah, I, I might pay handsomely by the hour for a private Google Hangout. Uh, on the turf side of things, I, I don't know. I, I just put a picture up of our impact sprinkler on a stand that's frozen with ice with water coming out of the nozzle. So uh, we're freeze protecting like they do citrus down in Florida. <laughs> um, but but it could be ten degrees tomorrow, so <laughs> the water will be flying. Anyways, thanks for letting me join you, Jason. Well, I uh, I appreciate everyone tuning in and, and having the interest. Um, I thought for a while I was the only one that was actually interested in this this type of nature, but it's seemed to have caught on pretty uh, heavily since GIS um, inundated with emails and questions and how do I create this? How do I do that? Um, and I love teaching and, and educating, and it's and it's fun to uh, fun to get on board with these two gentlemen and, and create something that I think is going to be pretty worthy uh, in this industry in the in the coming months. So um, quickly, I'll add that uh, GIS 2014. Um, I was asked to co-teach a seminar with Darren Batinsky on uh, data equals knowledge equals power. Um, he's asked me to bring a um, tech side to his uh, paper talk um, in terms of getting things in in, uh, in terms of data. So I'm excited to do that. Uh, Massachusetts, we're free and clear of snow. 36 greens are wide open and playable, and um, we're uh, we're ready for another golf season. All right. So this is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf. Out in San Diego, I spent the day out in the field um, creating some trials in the rain. We don't have rain uh, around here at all, but yeah, uh, I'm I'm one of the I guess I'm the oldest guy probably in the room for sure, and uh, I I still am pretty comfortable being behind a firewall <laughs> with my data. So I'm I'm not as excited about the cloud stuff yet. I'm trying to warm up to the idea. Uh, and and other, if people are concerned about the the security issues, I think you can do the same things on Excel with forms to data entry forms. But uh, I'm still just I'm still just sort of sitting back waiting to see. Although I did some cooperative projects with some of our programmers uh, using Google Docs, and that that worked out well. But uh, makes me nervous on the cloud. I'm getting more comfortable. It's just weird. <laughs> Matt, to you. Thanks, Larry. Um, yeah, I, I'm not maybe the uh, oldest guy in the room, but I'm certainly no spring chicken, and I'm just trying to stay ahead. Uh, every Google Hangout makes me feel older and older and like I'm really behind the curve. So um, I think it was one of the last Google Hangouts that um, Chris Tritabaugh was talking about a conversation he had on Twitter with, I think it was uh, Micah, Dr. Uh, Micah, and I thought, Jesus, I'm really missing something on Twitter, so now I have to get a Twitter account, and so I'm trying to figure out Twitter, and so, yeah, I, I, I'm on an island, um, so I definitely have embraced for 17 seasons being out of the mainstream and being on an island, um, although... I was on the board of the Cape Superintendents, and I'm still um, representing them on the New England Regional. So I'm not on Nantucket, where I'm really stranded, but I am still on an island. Um, so I'm just coming to these things and trying to pick up anything I can do and uh, learn and also contribute in any way that I can. I have started trying to use some Google Drive, but uh, when you live and work on property, as I do, I try to uh, balance between, am I being lazy using my iPad and not just carrying home my laptop up to 300 feet? Um, so, you know, it's all just kind of a learning curve for me. Um, so, speaking of the New England Regional, we're ha having our auction next week for the week after the Masters for golf rounds to raise money for all of the uh, turf research universities in New England. So, if you're interested in uh, buying a round of golf in New England, 
check out uh, TF New England and uh, follow my ridiculous uh, tweets on at 22 Crowther. Thanks. Well, I'm just going to sum up and say that uh, I learned a lot here today. I've used Google Drive for sharing large files, but that's been about it. And I, I now see some new applications for it, potentially even for myself. I, I could see it for a superintendent the way you guys describe it, just 100%. It makes a lot of sense. But uh, I want to thank Jason for his time and for the information he gave us. And, John, I want to thank you for putting these things together each week or as ever often as they happen. They're a lot of fun, and they learn a lot from them. So thanks. I appreciate it, Mike. Uh, I don't have anything else. Um, I want to basically thank Jason for coming in and obviously everybody else. It's awesome to see that we've got 10 people in here contributing. Um, that's a, a far cry from where we were um, you know, several months ago when we started this last fall. I think that they're building momentum. I like that we can do these and not really put uh, too much effort into them um, and have them there up on the web so everybody can watch them later. I think that that's good. Uh, I will say uh, I spent last week a few days anyway with Larry um, right in that same chair that he's sitting and we did a hangout from his front yard and, and saw um, the helicopter or you know his drones flying all over the place. Uh, I was really impressed. Larry and I sat down and we talked about his back end of all his uh, technology that he has for their website um, and I didn't realize how much of a tech geek I was until I got all excited about all the uh, Chrome jobs and all the other different <laughs> technology that he had on the back end. Um, they have a lot of good information at Pace uh, Turf. So, um, Larry, thanks for inviting me out last week to, to talk. Um, I don't have anything coming up. I'm actually home for probably three three weeks or so before I start traveling again. Um, so I'm excited to uh, to be able to get some stuff done. And, and our app will be... Um, I'm hoping to launch it in the next week uh, with once it gets approved, it's probably be another two weeks. So I'm hoping by the end of April we have um, this new app launched and out. And uh, I think it's going to be cool. So we'll see. Um, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for everybody following uh, Chris Tritabaugh and a few others that were in the uh, on Twitter um, following us. And that's it. So see you next time. I don't know when our next Hangout will be, but I'll try and pull that together here in the next few days. I'm sure we'll be doing it um, next Tuesday or sometime around there. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, yeah. John.